Hello, my friends, and welcome back to Ultimate Skyrim Season 2. This is Episode 15. Thank you for joining me here today. Last we left off, we were just about to embark on a series of Whiterun adventures. I was thinking about the best order in which to do some of the tasks that we have on our plate. If you guys don't remember, these tasks are to one, deliver a potion to Luke and Valerius down in Riverwood. We have two, another delivery in Rorikstead, and then three, and probably one of the most important tasks we have at the moment, is to go to the Swindler's Den and follow up on our lead on the Alakir as part of the quest with uh, Sadia and Whiterun, if you guys remember all that. And then finally, we have our man Karjo's Moon Amulet inside Orithyme. This one has me a little bit worried because looking at the map, Raithen looking at his map, right, notices that this dungeon exists on the north side of the border between Whiterun Hold and Hjalmarch and Morthal, he's heard stories about. It's not exactly a friendly, easy place to be, but we'll have to worry about that. That's a problem for future Raithen, frankly. So in between now and then, what I think what we're going to do what I think we are going to do is make our way to Rorikstead first and use that as kind of a base of operations for the rest of the stuff that we're doing in this area. I'm actually holding off on the Riverwood delivery. We can always do that when we get back, but it's about 10, 11 p.m. right now. Sorry, 11 a.m. And I figure that will give us enough time, excuse me, enough time to get there, kind of set up shop. I bought a couple bed rolls in between the last episode and this one so that we can have a place to sleep without having to pay for an inn. And we'll use that as a base of operations and then move in on Swindler's Den. That's my plan. Excuse me, just drinking my water. And that's what we're gonna do. Wonderful weather that we're having, unfortunately, but that's okay, especially, so we don't have a tent. I was thinking about crafting one or buying the pieces to craft it. But as you guys know, or probably know from the last episode, I am trying to save my money for a horse right now. It's kind of my number one priority. Oh, great. It's really coming down. And obviously having just a bedroll and not a full camp and a tent is going to be a problem if we keep experiencing weather like this. However, it does give us an extra reason to use Rorikstead as kind of a base of operations because even if we set up our bedroll somewhere in town. There's plenty of buildings that we can take shelter in if it gets really bad. Now, with all of that said, I think it's time to get on the road here. Do I have any buffs active? That part I don't remember. I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and fire off on this salty saber stew. Delicious, honestly. And we don't have much in the way of water at the moment. We do have some things that we can fill up. So, be on the lookout. I believe there's a pond over yonder, but I don't know. Maybe Raithen saw it from up there. There's our in-character justification. I'm sure he could have, and I just wasn't paying attention. There we go. Oh, doesn't that look delicious? Very tasty, this water, I'm sure. It's not stagnant, I guess. There's a stream running through it got some I'm gonna fill that up with water as well and then why don't we get a whole I'm gonna take three drinks then I'm just gonna fill it up again there we go we are good to go oh this is another change that I wanted to make on camera something I've been thinking about a lot is taking frostfall and bopping this exposure rate down to let's call it 0.4 I just think it's a little high for now. I think from a gameplay perspective, it's fun enough to manage, but from a realism perspective, it just goes up a little bit too fast. I think that even 0.3 may be a better option, but 0 0.3, 0 0.4, oh man. White run. Rainy day and white run hold. Um, oh, we could also use some additional pelts and goods and whatnot, even just the experience. Oh, my God. What was that? I uh, got him once. Let's watch where he goes. We're also supposed to collect rabbit pelts, I believe. 
Uh-oh. Where are y'all? Why are you drawing? Oh. Guy. Oh my god! I thought he was going straight for me. Got him. They were protecting me from this wild deer. I was wondering why they were taking their weapons out. What's up, guys? The longer we travel the roads of Skyrim, the more empty this land seems. Is that so? What have you got for sale? Take a look. See if they have anything good. Anything useful. They got some bolts. We could always use some of those. But, same thing. I don't want to spend money if I can help it. How many bolts do I have? The crossbows, especially that orcish crossbow that we got, that's a real boon for the early game. As we are now. These are pretty cool. Well, if we have access to magical bolts, and they're iron, so they're not that expensive. I'm actually going to buy these. And that's okay. I can hold off on those, but even a couple of those magical bolts can make a big difference. Steel scimitar, steel warhammer, all this stuff, I think. Ooh, a scimitar would be cool to have. But with that long sword, I think I'm going to hold off for now. May your road lead you to warm side. Thank you, Rasad. While I'm here, let's go ahead and favorite all of those. I'm going to favorite our... I think I already favorited the shield. I did. And one thing I need to do is make sure that that is assigned to... Oh, this group is shot. Okay. Go confirm this group, and then confirm that one, and then remove this guy. God, Sky UI is so cool, isn't it? And now, if we hit F1, we should be... Good to go with our sword and shield. Nice. Now we got this lad here, or lass. Lad, I think, right? If he has the uh, antlers like that. And there's no way I can carry this guy. But you know what? Stenvar might be able to. Let's see. Is that... I'm here to help. Can I trade some things with you, my friend? Yeah, sure. I'm going to go ahead and give you... This might be enough. Oh, it won't fit. It's too heavy. Are you, You're not carrying much of anything. Uh, damn. It is. It's too heavy. Okay. Well, I figured that would be the case. Oh, while I'm here... What can I do for you, friend? Oh, Stenvar. We're friends now. Dude, we've been through a lot together. He, I like to think that Stenvar's guidance has been helping Wraithen kind of make progress as he's been these past couple episodes. The other important bit yeah, sure. is that Ritual Stone ability. I think Wraithen's been thinking about that a lot. Because as someone pointed out, raising the dead and kind of necromancy in general, if I'm correct, is kind of a no-no in Redguard Hammerfell culture. You can have two of these, and then I'm going to hold on to here, have two of those. And one of these. All right, sweet. Nice. It's kind of a no-no. And I think Wraithen has been kind of playing with that idea in his mind, right? Oh, and I was going to skin our lad here. Uh, I, I don't know. Is it even worth it? We got stuff to do. Um, 11.58... Sure, why not? But, um... Oh, whoops. Why do I have to sheath my weapon or spell, huh? Tell me that. Um... So it's very much against Red Guard culture. Skin some pelts. Nice. Hey, that's pretty good. Getting a little chilly. It's a little wet out here. Alright, we're gonna leave it. The rest. Just wanted the pelt. Um... Red Guard culture is against necromancy and raising the dead and they're pretty honorific of the dead so I think that this ritual stone and this weird power that Wraithen now feels kind of at his fingertips and he can feel it he feels it in that kind of intrinsic way it's like you, you know you realize it on an intuitive level who are you Shoron man walking on a mission so I feel like he just it's stirring like within him right and kind of gnawing at the edges of his mind, but he's trying to not focus on that right now, because he's obviously got other stuff to worry about. 
And the question is, too, now Stenvar, I like to think that they would have had a conversation about it. And I imagine that Stenvar's perspective is tentative. I think he's a, you know, a fairly world-weary Nord, so it's not like the idea of necromancy and that stuff is entirely foreign to him, but I don't think he's a super big fan. I think Nords culturally are pretty honorific of the dead as well, and he doesn't think that going that road is a good idea, I suppose you could say. What do we have here? Same thing. Wraithen, I think, is noticing how even during a torrential downpour, this region of the world is considerably less. And of course, I'm sure Wraithen just spotted that chest, right? <laughs> That's the in-game explanation I'm giving for why I just went straight up to it. But it's so much warmer here, even in a torrential downpour. It's hard not to notice if you're Wraithen. It's interesting to see a different part of the world and there's a certain charm to it, right? I think Wraithen found the austere cold. Oh, is that a fox? It is. I don't think we need fox meat. I don't remember exactly what our miscellaneous gathering quests were. Oh, the lichen. I believe this is in... Uh, someone commented saying that this is in, I think, Morthal or Hjalmarch. So hopefully, because we have a reason to go up that way already. Um, rabbit legs. So just rabbit legs are what we're worried about. As far as the animal collections go. Oh, shit. I see you, wolf. I see you, boy. Alright, well then, in that case... Do I not have this assigned? I'm gonna make that two. Hey, guy. Uh-oh. He's going after that fox. I know he is. I want to avoid taking any health damage that I can. Because it's just gonna... Get our poultice. Got him. Make sure our crossbow is nice and reloaded. Oh, hey, what's up, guys? Tundra cotton. Hello. Yes. Dustin. All right. Have we met before? Make it, quick. it seems like we know each other, but I don't remember. Just taking a quick... Ooh, a halberd. That's always nice. The material's not so great. Leather braces and minor alchemy. That's pretty cool, too, to be honest with you. Lots of poisons, this man. Everything a little bit too pricey for my blood. But actually, this one's pretty good. I'll take that stamina potion. Why not? Scroll of Knock. This is good to have. Shit. Of course, it banks on the idea that this scroll is worth less money than what you get from the thing you're unlocking. Which is often the case. It's always good to have... Alright, I'm going to get one. And what... We'll, excuse me. Just have to be careful with how we use it, you know? The rest of the stuff I can hold off on. Mm -hmm. Have a good one, guys. Mm. Wraithen knows that the encounter with the Red Guards is going to be one of the toughest things that he's done in his entire life, if not the toughest. I think he's pretty nervous, but he's trying to be prepared. And... Once again, I don't think that Wraithen entirely subscribes to this story that Sadia has given. Well, okay. Maybe, because it's like hard to imagine exactly where Wraithen's head is at going into this dungeon. What's up, guys? You're interfering with official Thormor business. Oh, fuck. Until I'm... Sorry, that was not my intention. Oh my god, Wraithen's heart is racing there. Oof, that's the first time we've encountered Thalmor here in Skyrim. Ooh, just imagine his adrenaline. Adrenaline pumping, if I didn't say adrenaline. His adrenaline, you know? But, um, the Red Guards. Now, the idea of the corruption within the Hammerfell's kind of city-state governments is not entirely implausible. And I think Wraithen thinks that because of what happened with his mom, where both his mother and his father 
were in a way betrayed from within, like within their own power structures. So it's not crazy to think. Uh oh. A couple of wolves. But at the same time, Sadia's story doesn't really add up either. Now that other one should run off. Oh, he was mourning him. Oh, it sounds like there's more, too. Uh-oh. Gotcha, baby. Just call me Wolf Killer. Well, then. But yeah, so Sadia's story is a little strange. And so I think Raythan's just going to get to the bottom of this. And frankly, the idea of facing off against people who, let's say that they were actually um, traitors to the Hammerfell self-governed city-states, then Raythan's got a bone to pick with them. So I think that's his primary fuel going into here, knowing that they're going to respond with mortal force. I think Raythan is ready to meet them in kind. Perhaps even being a little reckless. More Thalmor on this road and a prisoner. That's two Thalmor patrols that Wraithen's seen. Now, he doesn't have any sort of indication that they are aware of who he is. Oops. Oh, big elk. That's not what I meant to do. Where's my other boots? There we go. I meant to put my face cover on. Oh, God. Wolves are attacking this man's crops. Got that one. Alright, let's just switch to our... Oh god, that mammoth! <laughs> Has used some sort of magical levitation. Oh god! Oh. Did the other wolf run off? The Barley Dark Farm. The pup. Whoa! Leave him alone. Oh, the dog died. Also, you like that one, guy? Hey, dude, you Nords are crazy. He's taking off. Just leave him. Or maybe this guy's been hassled by all these wolves. Dude, you're going to get yourself killed. You want to just run out into the wilds? Like, yeah, but then again, who am I to say? Who is Wraithen to say? This guy lives out here in the wild. Evidently knows what he's doing. That wolf's running from him. Ah. Poor puppy. Oh. Oh, well. Maybe that's why he wants revenge so badly. You kill a man's dog and you incite a white-hot rage. I think. Oh, man. Oops. Didn't mean to pull that back out. Imagine Wraithen taking in that crisp air. It has this calming presence, I think. The air of Skyrim. It's so... Stark makes you feel alive. But to be honest with you, I think that Wraithen's breathing could use some work. I think that he's in a mindset where, you know, having that still meditativeness, I guess you could say, is it's kind of eluding him at the moment. Too much on his mind. So whatever healing properties the nature of Skyrim and Whiterun can impart are being diminished by his mindset. I think maybe Stenvar notices that a bit as well and has noticed it about Wraithen since the beginning. Wraithen's incessant need to prove himself and to get stronger and to throw himself into these mortally dangerous situations. Oh my god. And his... Oh my god! Oh my god! Jesus! Stenvar! Get back, bro! Which button is it? I can never... Stenvar, come back! Oh my god, I think we need to go in and... <laughs> okay, Stenvar, come hither, please. No, not wait. I can never remember what my hotkeys are, sorry. It's this one? There, I think it is. Yeah, here he is. So it's N. Remind me of that later. And also, mod configuration. Nethers. We are going to make them, or it's follower framework, sorry, a little less 
Let's see, follower tweaks. Stenvar allowed to sandbox. Set combat style. Mercenary. Berserker, Archer, Ranger, Spellsword. Let's see. Mercenary would fit, I suppose. Yeah, stay close to me. Combat roll standard. Healer, tank. All right, well, tank fits. Package priority set to essential. We do want to set them to essential, but I think we already have that covered. So here, allow stealth AI, set follow range, default follow. I just want to make sure they don't run off. Am I missing that? Combat roll tank, taunt sound, male average, combat style, mercenary, combat range, clothes, default combat. Um, I don't know. Seems fine. At least as fine as it can be for now. Maybe gameplay. Let's see here. Reducing fighting. Da, 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 da. Whatevs. That's all fine for now. I want to make a save too, just in case. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> it's kind of ironic that I was talking about Stenvar getting mad at Wraithen for throwing himself into dangerous situations, but as Stenvar does something similar. But I like to imagine that Stenvar is on some level protecting this whelp that he's now been hired by. It's just like, even if Wraithen hasn't opened up that much about his past yet. Oh, beautiful. It's just so obvious to a seasoned mercenary like Stenvar that Wraithen is... Oh, God, what was that? Is uh, not only as green as they come oh gosh but also from an affluent background I mean where else does this man get the money to pay for someone like Stenvar's services clearly not with his own skills Stenvar watches Wraithen pluck a butterfly off of a bush <laughs> and Stenvar's like you alright there buddy and I imagine Wraithen's like, you know, the butterfly wings have valuable properties and can be sold as his justification for why he just tore apart a fucking butterfly, right? So clearly, Wraithen's yeah! in a tough spot. Jesus, what the fuck was that? Oh my god. Stenvar, whoa. It scared the shit out of me. Was that shouting? Do you know how to shout? Hmm. Interesting. Maybe warn me next time, guy. I'm assuming that's Stenvar's tanking ability. I'm just gonna check on something really fast. Oh my god, that scared the shit out of me. Pardon my French. Follower tweaks. Tank, taunt sound. This has got to be it. Average. Unvoiced. Eh, I'll leave it. I wonder what he was taunting, if that's what he was doing. God, it is... Slow going, isn't it? Well, it looks like... Something on the horizon. Oh, I can see some... Buildings, it looks, that must be Rorikstead. Well, what time is it? 3.54, about 4 o'clock. So we are gonna get up on over yonder. And then we're gonna have a quick snack. And then I think we'll have everything we need to go and confront Kamatu and his soldiers. Hopefully. We're gonna have to be smart about that one. Imagine on the road, Stenvar asks Wraithen if this is something that he really needs to do. And maybe they have a real discussion for the first time about Wraithen's goals, right? Like his long term goals about how he needs to bring it to the Thalmor and get stronger. And maybe they have a. a, a Kind of a heart to heart in which Wraithen opens up about that being his intentions, and Stenvar says something to the effect of, you know, look, 
you're paying me and you know I'm with you for that do you really think like why do you even feel like you need to do that right do you think that taking the Thalmor by storm is going to bring back your family because it's not gonna and you don't know necessarily what you're gonna get your life into if you follow that road but of course Raithen doesn't really want to hear that so maybe Raithen defensively shuts down that conversation or I imagine Stenvar at least with this these red guard Alakir warriors hold up in the den I imagine Stenvar being like you know I can understand that one I can understand you know wanting to know what happened especially if there's a chance that your mother is still alive out there and it, you know if these people might be a lead on what happened to her like okay fine I can see going after that you know and if you really need to then it at least checks out but maybe be a little bit more careful with throwing yourself into these situations right because you only have one life as far as we know and Raithen's already gotten so lucky coming right to the edge of death between wolf attacks and the exposure until next time. I just imagine Stenvar in his more seasoned wisdom trying to impart to Raithen that he ought to be careful. And that maybe it's not such a good idea to be so frivolous with his own life. But of course, this is not what Raithen wants to hear. Come on. Yeah! Oh, Jesus. Okay. That is scaring the shit out of me every time. All right. Well, this is when. Stenvar pulls out the big guns, apparently. <laughs> okay, that is a lot. Jeez, that wolf is so brazen. Okay, I'm gonna have to turn that down, because <laughs> it is scaring the shit out of me. Okay, follower framework. Let's go. Follower tweaks. Um, it's got a tank taunt sound. Let's go unvoiced. We definitely hired Stenvar to be our mainline muscle, so it makes sense that he have, he'd have the tank roll. I just don't know if we want to roleplay that he can shout. Beat you there. It's like, you know, I'm a pretty decent hunter after all that time hunting with my parents. Hunting humans, of course. Totally different story. But... Anyway, back to that previous conversation. I imagine Raithen shuts down Stenvar. He's going to do it anyway, no matter what Stenvar says, which is, you know, concerning. But Stenvar's like, well, I get paid, and if he's not going to listen, then fuck him, you know what I mean? At least for now. Maybe it was like, Stenvar is clearly not a talker either, so I think even Stenvar putting himself out there on a limb to give Raithen that advice that clearly comes from a personal place for Stenvar and then having Raithen kind of dismiss it as he does is kind of like a, oh, well, you know, fuck you then. But in reality, Stenvar just feels a little bit burned because Raithen clearly seems uninterested in his advice. It's so easy to personalize people's reactions, right? When the closer reality is that, you know, Raithen's got his own self-loathing going on Definitely doesn't want to hear from a companion that he's growing to trust that, you know, Raithen's ideas might be a little ill-advised. So, I don't know. Imagine as one of those little moments where, like, they kind of connected and they're still afraid to get too personal, but we'll see how their relationship develops from that point. Hello there, child. Need something? No, I'm good. Just here. Man. Raithen was so in his own head what Stenbar was saying that he didn't stop to examine this little hamlet like out in the plains of Whiterun. So different from his life back at home growing up in the urban sprawl of Tanith. It's just a lifestyle that he never really 
imagined for himself. It's not like there aren't farms that he's seen in Hammerfell, but this is rough living. Even here in Whiterun, the degree of cold, you know, versus living in Hammerfell, it's just like, it's not an easy place to live, even here in the center of Skyrim, where the climbs are more temperate. All right, we got some cooked wolf meat, some bottled water. And you know what? Do we even need to go to the front? Oh, well, here's what we can do. We can deliver our our thing. Dagvadirs. I'm going to check and let them see over yonder. Of course, whenever I do that, whenever I use the map to find a NPC like that, I like to roleplay that Wraithen just asked someone nearby where he could find the person that he's looking for. It's like we got a smith here. I imagine that's who we're Need supposed something? to speak to. No, I'm okay, thank you. Oh, seeing her gathering flowers like that, it's hard not to be reminded of Sophie for Raven. Oh, it's not a blacksmith. Huh? He's, uh, looks like a hunter or like a woodsman. I have a weapon for you from Adrian Avenici. Thank you. Here, this is for you. Nice. Ought to up those gold rewards, I think, too. Good day. All right, sun's going down. The question is, do we go after them now? I think taking them by afternoon is suitable. Maybe they'll be tired or maybe they'll even be drunk as the evening goes on. This simple farming life. Like a scarecrow out in the field. Look at this place. Well, with all of that considered, why don't we well here's what we'll do so my restore stamina is still okay oops that's not what i meant to do oopsie pardon the loading screen um i want to check the inn for foodstuffs to see if they have anything that's going to really help us in this upcoming fight against the alakir as we try and trace back the location of our missing mother Praying that, of course, she is just, in fact, missing and not actually gone from this world, as we'll say. Oh my god, this is a long loading screen for what must be a very small cell. Oh, hey, Stenvar. Nice place. Thanks for letting me pop in for a moment. Hello. Hello. Oh, look at that. I'm gonna sell some leeks. Excuse me, Palma. All right, well, into the inn, and then out towards the Swindler's Den, I suppose. This is gonna be a big one. I'm gonna have to be smart. Wraithen's gonna have to be smart. He might be throwing himself into reckless situations, but once again, he's a very smart individual, and he has probably the most realistic sense of what these Alakir... I mean, I'm sure Stenvar is not completely... You know, he's a seasoned warrior, so he knows that these guys are too, and he knows what that means, you know. But Wraithen knows how the Alakir fight. He grew up around them. The fact that he's facing off against them in this weird twist of fate is just a strange irony that is absolutely not lost on him. Because I never imagined a time when I would have to face off against people from my homeland in a place so far away from my homeland. Just a very strange path that's led him to here. I imagine him thinking back on when he was a kid and when he was growing into a teenager, you know, kind of all of the ways he expected his life to go. I think we've spoken about this before, but as he grew up hearing about his parents' war stories and about his dad in particular, who had traveled across the world through his service with the Legion, I think like many youths, you know, Wraithen's aspirations were to be an adventurer or to see the world and to, you know, go on grand escapades 
If you need a meal or room, I've got both. Thanks, Mralki. Nice to make your acquaintance. And anyway, it's just a cautionary tale, I suppose, of being careful what you wish for. All right, my friend, what do you have for me? Now, we've got stamina. That's okay. Ranged weapons deal 5% more damage. That's pretty good. But we're not going to be using that much. This is nice as well, the apple pie. Magic is increased by 10 points. That's not that great, though. Carry weight. Health is increased. Now, the beef stew, that we're definitely going to have to go for. Just got to do it. Do I have anything worth selling? Not really. Until next time. Thanks, Meralki. I'm actually going to console myself an additional 200 gold for those missives quests. Just because I think that they, I'm going to have to tweak them upward. Nice haul. Would you like to share this loot with your followers? Sure. So that way we each get a little, you know. Thanks. The Alakir warrior. He saw an Alakir warrior leave. That's interesting. All right, so we got our beef stew. I don't know. It'd be nice if there was like a non-violent option or if Raven could just speak to these Alakir, but I just think that he knows that's not how it's going to go, you know? They're going to respond with moral force when he's even in the vicinity. It's just their training. Let's see. Do you have news of our quarry? I've seen the woman you're looking for. Okay, just in case I get... Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to save just in case I get shoehorned into a quest outcome that I did not intend like last time. Oh, it's the Harvest Festival. Oh, I forgot. Well. Oh, man. Well, shit. Now I imagine Stenvar just being like, hey, you know what, man? Fine. If in the morning you still want to go after Kamatu and the boys, we'll do that. But right now, enjoy the Harvest Festival, or even afterwards if you really want to. Hello, everyone. Oh, man. We are all dancing, I guess you could call it. Oh, yeah. There's nothing wrong with a little adventure now and then. Yes. Oh. Ooh, Albus so Sierra, what do you got for sale, my friend? Take a look. Oh, oh wow. He's got a lot of stuff going on. Orcish war axe. This would sure be nice to have, wouldn't it? Oh man. There's too many things that I want to buy. Nordic short sword, that would be cool too. Fuck. I like the longsword. How much more damage? But that's significantly more damage than our longsword. Whatevs. Fine. He's got a lot of armor, too. Expert alteration. This would be nice to have. Necklace of water breathing. How about that? Well, either way. So I think Stenvar wants Wraithen to just... Oh, man, this guy's drunk already. It's only six. Doesn't want him to, you know... Go brashly into this fray. Oh, look at this Alec here just playing his drum. But I don't know if this is enough to distract Wraithen. Clearly, everyone's having a good time, but... Do you have news of our quarry? You have? Where? Tell me now. What do I get for telling you? Money, if that is what you wish. Now tell me where she is. Mmm. We will find her eventually. I don't think he trusts these people yet. It's just, he doesn't have enough evidence either way, right? It's like he can't just take them at face value. Oh, this is so cute. Oh, man. You guys are insane just out here. I guess maybe it's not that cold, but... It's not warm either, but that's Nords for you, I guess. It really doesn't bother them. Oh, we got some food? Can I take some of this? Some cooked rabbit leg. I don't want to take more than my share, you know what I mean? I'll take a slice of cheese and some leeks. 
And Wraithen just absconds over by himself, right, uh, to the food table, as is the case for many socially awkward people at parties. <laughs> it's just easier that way, you know what I mean? Something to keep yourself occupied when you don't really want to talk to anyone or you don't really know how. And where is Stenvar? Off enjoying the festivities as well. He seems always up there. Kind of doing his own thing. Yeah, so I forgot. Him and Wraithen are in a... Not a, maybe a fight necessarily, but sort of one. You know, it's just part of becoming friends in a way. This girl keeps looking at me. I feel like Wraithen is wondering why and... It's just like, can she even... Oh my gosh, this guy down the street is fucking going for it. Uh, Wraithen can't help but laugh. It's nice to do, too. Even... It was like, when you can laugh, you know? It's hard to feel down or you just... I heard someone say one time, and I feel like maybe Wraithen heard this at some point, too, right? Where... You just got to take the laughter where you can get it, even when you're in the middle of a terrible time in your life or even when you're in the middle of grief or, or just something difficult happening. The laughter is like a brief respite and it's not going to make it all go away, but you just take those moments when you can get them. You know what I mean? So I imagine Wraithen doing a bit of that. But as the laughter kind of passes, he just knows that he still feels like he needs to do this. And maybe this is where is Stenvar? Where'd he go? Where's our man? I actually don't know where he went. Oh, excuse, there he is. I'm here to help. He's here to help. So maybe we have a, a heart to heart with Stenvar. Let's go, Stenvar. Where he's like, you know, look, I understand before you're coming from a, a, a place of wisdom, you know, that you are looking out for me and I do appreciate it. And I don't know if this is the right decision, but it feels like the decision that I need to make. I need to go there. I need to confront them. And I need to see if they know anything about what's going on. You know, Sadia and her whole situation is honestly of secondary concern. I think it's interesting to Wraithen, and he wants to figure out what's going on there. But this is just the only lead he has on the last bit of his family remaining. And he just needs to do it. And so I imagine at that point... Stenvar is like, okay, you know, like, I don't know if it's the, the decision that I would make, but that doesn't matter because, you know, this is your life, it's your choice, and I'll help you with this, you know, and so you're going to be paying me, that's for sure, but let's do it. So now the two friends, well, maybe they're getting to be friends, the two traveling companions set out after the festival into the night to see if they can get to the bottom of what's going on. Alright. Out in the wilds here, we gotta keep our wits about us. Now, I only have three bolts. What I can do is, I believe this is my, is it B? Uh, I'm trying to remember what my ammo cycling button is. Is it this one? No, it wouldn't be. Did I not? Hold on a second. Sorry about this, everyone. Cycle poisons, quick shield, quick ranged. Oh, left hand hotkey. I believe it should be this one and then that one. That would make sense. There we go. That's what I was looking for. I don't know why that isn't set already. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. This way we can very quickly go through our different ammo types. The Wraithans notice this mountain that just overlooks everything here on the White Run Plains. It almost feels like you can't escape it. It's like he noticed it on the way into White Run. He noticed it while we were in White Run, looking out at the Dragon's Reach perch, right? 
and he notices it here and he can't shake this feeling like it's watching passing judgment on what he does down here like it might be getting cold. Let's check. No, not so bad. Hmm. Wolves. Is that a horse? And what is this here? Paper roll. Shrine of Zenithar. Wraithen goes to use these shrines and he's heard stories about how even being in their presence can have a real impact on the way that you feel. And people say that the Adra are dead. It's one of the oldest stories about the creation of our world. The old bones of this world being consisted of the Adra people say that they can feel it and yet when he approaches these shrines this is the second time now it's as though he feels nothing a concerning idea for him I think that his father at the very least and his mother too but his father was a somewhat religious or at the very least maybe didn't talk that much about it but seemed to subscribe to some sort of worship of the Dunmer gods and also of the Nine, the old gods. And it's distressing to Wraithen because he's never felt as far from the gods as he does these days. Sees a flag. Oh, it looks like we might have found our spot here. Be careful. As the sun sets over the White Run Plains, it's time for Wraithen and Stenvar to get to work. Looks like we're here. That's close enough. Is it? Well, honestly, based on the time, this is going to be the cliffhanger for our episode. So in the next episode, I think shit's about to go down, you could say. Oh man, I'm stoked about it, but I do have to go. So, as always, thank you guys so much for joining me for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed playing it for you guys. And I will see you in the next one.